It's my pleasure um, at this time every year to give a brief run through to the year that's uh, just occurred and to take the opportunity to have a look through at some of the many exciting things um, as well as challenges and opportunities that are facing us. Um, before I do that, I always take uh, this opportunity, as Tessa and Alan have done, to thank people because this year has been an incredibly busy and positive year and you'll hopefully get a flavour of that, not just from me, but from Dillamy uh, and Gus uh, later on. But it's only exciting and it's only been busy because of the fantastic work of, of the staff <coughs> and all the Eye Hospital. I want to again, with every opportunity I get, to pay great credit to them and the hard work they do. But always in the easiest of situations, uh, we have some estate that we are, as you'll hear later, proposing that we rebuild and develop to make it more comfortable, not just for our patients, but also for our staff, and in an economic environment which has been challenging. Uh, and yet they continue and continue to persevere and deliver first class <coughs> exceptional care. And they make me and the board incredibly proud. I wanted to start just by thanking our board for the staff. I want to When I, uh, I think when I came for an interview, people described Warfields as a bit of a family, and I didn't quite understand what that meant, but I hoped it wasn't a national type family. It was a, uh, a slightly kinder and more relaxed gentle family than that. And actually, that's exactly what it turned out to be. The reason the Warfields family is used is because we are, we are but the sum of many different entities. The important part of us is the people that we work with. Our charities that support us, our relationship with UCL and the Institute of Ophthalmology is absolutely critical in maintaining our position as the leading biohospital in the world. But also, I want to thank a number of groups. Firstly, to thank our colleagues who you'll see here today in green shirts, uh, the friends of Moorfields. Um, not only have they, again, done a fabulous job of supporting us at today's event, um, they do a fabulous job all year round. And not just at City Road, but at many sites uh, in a strategy that is growing to support our patients. And some of you may be aware that due to the uh, innovation of their chief executive, uh, Angela, and the hard work of the team, a bid was put forward to an organisation called Help Force that means that very soon we're going to be using our volunteer workforce, the Friends Volunteer Workforce, to help ease the anxiety of patients when they go into operating theatres. A time that I'm sure you can imagine for all of us is a time of great anxiety and worry and concern. Um, what a thing to be able to offer patients who request it. Somebody to literally hold your hand and talk to you through that process. That's the type of thing, uh, the type of initiative that this organisation is coming up with. And I just want to put on record again to the friends, the volunteers, a huge thank you for everything they continue to do for us and for our patients. We have many wonderful charities that support us, and if any of you uh, pass the health hub, you'll see the amount of uh, fabulous charities, some big, some very small, that play a really key role in helping us deliver expert care. But of course, one of the key ones for us is the Northern Eye Charity. Uh, members of staff have been supporting uh, today and helping you. Much of the good stuff you see around our hospital, our ability to do things that the NHS can't necessarily afford in terms of research, in terms of equipment, in terms of support and funding of education and development, comes from their very kind generosity. And I would commend to you the old pack, the impact report, which is hot off the press, uh, that actually talks a lot about the work that the charity has done and the impact it's had uh, on patients and on staff. So, uh, on behalf of the board again, uh, to thank you for our charity and their representatives who are here today. Thank you very much for everything you do. I'm going to jump in uh, to a brief uh, look back. A similar type of format to those of you that have been here before. So, what's the highlights uh, of the year that we've just come to, uh, ending uh, on the 31st of March? Well, I'm not going to steal uh, Gus's thunder by trying to pretend to talk about the light study in any detail, I'll leave that to him. But many of you will be aware that we received significant media coverage uh, with our collaboration with Google DeepMind on the development of deep learning and artificial intelligence. They help us 
uh, or even its disease, uh, or even scans and images, um, to the degree that allows us to work at a higher volume to support the growing amount of disease that we're seeing, not just in this country, but across the world. We have a small matter of a Care Quality Commission inspection, which um, took up a lot of time of all of our staff, of all of our executive team, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the results of that. And then finally, the progress of Orin, our plans to relocate our services uh, just across the road at City Work down to some campus, which are currently out of consultation. So when I look back, there are many things that are highlighted in the year, and I'll pick up some of those. But those particular three popped into my mind. Now, media recognition is important. Why is it important? Well, it makes the chief executive look good. That's not really a very good reason why we should want to be on the front page of the media. And actually, if I have a choice, it's often better to never appear on the front page of the media. But um, we had a wonderful year with fantastic media recognition, uh, recognising the great work of our clinical staff, of our clinical scientists, and our collaboration with the Institute of Technology. And I put there that over 500 news items, I think we counted 12 front pages, which is quite an achievement for a hospital of our size. Uh, BBC News, um, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, Sky News, and of course the BBC Two documentary seen by nearly 3, 000, 3 million people which hopefully some of you have seen, I think you can still see it in the mind there, uh, which is all about hospitals that change the world. And uh, I, for one, and I speak for all of my colleagues here, is incredibly proud to be associated uh, with such a program and see the great work of our staff supporting patients and their kids. Um, I'll still pick up, of course, in great detail uh, for the life. But one thing I, I would say, which you may not, is the significant importance of the type of work he and colleagues have led on. It's not just around science and translational research, which is really important. That's one of the three reasons we exist as hospitals. But it's also about changing the face of delivery of care nationally and internationally. We are facing a burdening crisis of disease and health care across the world, within ophthalmology and outside of ophthalmology. We're also facing that with a significant drop in resources being made available. So we need to find better ways to look after more people effectively. And his work and the work of his team on the light trials is a very good example of how morphins has helped lead the way in something so important. Deep mind health I've already picked up on. Um, for over 50 eye conditions, uh, the deep learning artificial intelligence algorithm that was produced by Morphins in collaboration with Google DeepMind was able to produce levels of 94% accuracy in what the algorithm was picking up, which is pretty impressive. Does that mean everything's going to switch to computers? Uh, it doesn't. Does it mean we're going to massively change our entire workforce? And those of you that come to our hospital are going to come here and talking to a computer and not some of our wonderful clinicians. It doesn't mean that. What it means is that we hope in the future, particularly those of you with stable disease, we can try and find ways to manage the disease closer to your home in a way that is more convenient and reassuring to you and doesn't always require you having to come in and wait to be diagnosed and looked after by a hospital. We are some way away from that yet because like any good institution that's interested in research, we want to prove we can get things right before we roll it out and involve our patients and their families in that choice because for some people this may not be the best thing. So we want to listen to you. So innovation and discovery. There's three reasons we exist here at Morfields. To deliver wonderful care, to deliver world-leading research and innovation, discovery being a key part of that strategy, and thirdly, to educate, to continue our role as an international leader in education. Part of that was recognised, as the chairman mentioned, in the Ophthalmology Palace in 2019, where 50 ophthalmologists uh, 50 people within the field of ophthalmology were recognised as being globally leading and making a real difference to ophthalmology. Almost 20% of those people were from Orphan's High Hospital or the Institute of Ophthalmology. That's significant achievement. And as Tessa already mentioned, having a nurse in of one of those 50, 49 of the other uh, colleagues being doctors, is a massive testament actually to the fact that ophthalmology is a team effort. And delivering expert care is no longer just about our wonderful doctors, but about the entire team that are care, be it nursing, optometrists, or doctors, and many other 
French. And then Oriel, which um, is hugely exciting, and I'm really looking forward to the day if this is supported by the public as a proposal moving forward, that I can stand here with shiny pictures of me and colleagues with hard hats on and shovels in the ground saying we're starting to build it. Not literally, um, <clears throat> but we are making tremendous progress. So our plans are currently out to public consultation because we want to listen to you, to colleagues that live around us, to people that use our services, to not just tell us, is this the right thing to do? But what should we look out for uh, on that journey of development? And we've already learned a tremendous amount from it. So the Oriel team had a stand downstairs. Hopefully people have engaged with that. At City Road this week, there is a stand there. We have social media. Uh, my colleague Joe, the Director of Strategy, is all around Southern England at various groups and the opportunity with our medical director to talk to members of the public about Oriel. But if any of you wish to get engaged, please do. We want to hear your views, we want to listen, we want to make sure we get this one. We've appointed uh, a designer in ACOM with a number of other collaborators, and I'm really pleased to say that the government has committed a, a substantial and important investment into the scheme, uh, backing the fact that the UK uh, needs a national leading eye centre and one that's fit for purpose for the next uh, 25 to 50 years. So we're delighted to uh, support. The consultation uh, was launched on the 24th of May. It goes for 16 weeks. We have a website there. If any of you uh, are struggling to see that, there are details within your pack. And any of the team will be here at the end. You can come and see us so we can tell you uh, how you can get involved. This is a collaboration between Warfield's Eye Hospital, the UCI Institute of Ophthalmology, because of course we're looking to do it together, and our partner, the Warfield's Eye Charity, who are supporting us with a significant uh, philanthropic ask that we're asking them to support this in companies. So, I mentioned the small issue of the Care Quality Commission. For most, for any chief executive, this is normally the kind of frightening moment in their career. Um, so, it was a bit nerve wracking because we had 30 inspectors come to our sites. They spent a couple of days. They went to City Road, they went to Bedford, they went to St George's. But before that, we shared with them nearly 600 pieces of information uh, about how our hospital is run. Now just to remind everybody, you can be either outstanding, uh, good, requiring improvement, or inadequate. Uh, to be fair, if we were inadequate, somebody else would probably be speaking to you uh, this afternoon. So as Tess already mentioned, for this trust overall, so that's all 30 of our sites, when looking at the evidence of when having visited a number of our sites, the Care Quality Commission gave us a rating of good, which uh, it was a, a good and very positive result for our staff. Um, for City Road itself, the entire site was rated to be outstanding, which is a significant achievement because that is nearly 60% of our work. But when you look at the ratings for the trust, the one that stands out as being uh, outstanding was the effective nature of what we do. So what we actually do to patients, with patients, the effective nature of this garden is really outstanding. And I think that's an incredibly important uh, point for us and can reassure you and reassure the public that the care we deliver uh, is of an outstanding nature. Uh, and we see that, of course, in the way we monitor our clinical outcomes. Um, I particularly was slightly disappointed that in the area of care, Outstanding because when you read the report, um, they comment consistently <coughs> about the caring nature of our staff, uh, the relationship we have with our volunteers, and much of which we do to make sure that patients have a holistic level of care, particularly those uh, with learning disabilities with other needs that need that support. Um, but that's for us to go back next time and make sure that we can convince people that we've achieved everything we wish to become a fully outstanding organisation. In terms of performance, um, it's been another chock a block and busy year. Uh, our a &E activity, we thought, was starting to tail up. Uh, what we saw within the year is a small increase. Actually, what we're seeing in the first quarter of this, this year, which uh, for those of you who acknowledge ophthalmology is normally uh, 
happening in the busy quarter because of her seasonality. We're seeing a, a further increase in AME activity. But just to give huge credit to our colleagues there in the AME department, even with this level of growth and demand, they are consistently seeing above 98% of people within four hours. In fact, the majority of people far less than that. Um, now that's a national target, but targets are important, but actually what's important is the patient's experience. But to continue to do that in an area that really isn't as well designed as we would like it to be, it's a great achievement. Our day case activity uh, was actually remarkably similar to that of the last year, as was our planned inpatient group. Our inpatient unplanned for our emergency activity, again, relatively similar, but where we've seen significant uh, drive and demand with our patients, which is really the bread and butter of the ophthalmology hospital. We are an outpatient driven specialty, predominantly. And where you see we've gone up from 600,000 to nearly 640,000 units. And that's without opening any additional satellites uh, or infrastructure units during the year. So, a busy year. So, now on to targets. Um, contrary to what you sometimes read in the press, Targets are so incredibly important, and they're incredibly important for us because they're just one indicator of how we're doing in terms of patient experience. They're just one indicator. We have a lot of indicators, but these are the key ones. So I mentioned earlier, consistently over 98% of our patients seen, diagnosed, treated within four hours a day. Um, the national target is 95%. The current performance of most hospitals in the UK is around 85%. We are different, we don't have a bed problem, we don't have blue light ambulances arriving, but this is still a significant achievement. Cancer, uh, two week wait, so that terrible moment when you're anxious from your referral that you may have cancer, the target is that you'll be seen by a specialist within two weeks. Two weeks is still too long. As I say to many people, those of you, your family, or hopefully not yourselves, have gone through this experience, Two weeks is 13 nights of lying in bed, not knowing what's going on. However, 94% of all our patients are seen within two weeks, and many patients are not quitting. 100% of our patients have their diagnostic test uh, within six weeks, and again, 95% uh, of our patients are seen and treated within the 18 week pathway. I think now that makes us the best performing hospital in the NHS. Against this target. But we know we want to do more and we know we need to get better. So, against the targets, I would say we've had a productive year, but still constantly wanting to learn and still wanting to get better. So, our patients uh, are the reason we exist. And I think I mentioned this last year. Whilst lots of these slides are about things we're very proud of and things we think we've done well on, I am the first to acknowledge that there are areas we need to improve. We are a learning organisation. And whilst 97% of patients would recommend this hospital to their friends and families, which is a remarkable achievement by the highest in the NHS, we still know there are areas we need to improve. We know our clinics are not functioning efficiently enough. We know some of our environment is still not good enough. And we know we put patients and their families through unnecessary waiting when we don't need to. Particularly when you're trying to access our services, change appointments, uh, or talk to us. We know we need to get better. So that's our journey uh, for next year. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning, none of this would be possible without that fantastic staff. Um, the vast majority of staff continue to recommend Walkfords as a great place to work, and that's a key indicator for me. Um, and we've been through difficult times, we've gone through changes, we've had to face a difficult external environment, and yet still, Nearly 200 nominations were received uh, for our staff at the recent staff awards event. And I have to say, for those of you who were there, I know that our governments were there, uh, some of the stories that patients and their families have written regarding the way that the staff have made them feel less anxious and had. Was phenomenal and made me incredibly proud uh, to be associated uh, with this great organisation. Education, I mentioned, is critical, and I'm delighted uh, that for uh, over a year now we've had the leadership of Professor Maura Colton, uh, who joins us today as our new 
Joint Director of Education with UCL, the Institute of Ophthalmology. We've achieved, she has achieved with her team and many of uh, the staff in the room, some phenomenal things. We've launched a brand new master's course for ophthalmic allied health professionals, which is a wonderful launch. We've really leapt into the apprenticeship program um, because we can see that there is phenomenal talent in and around this hospital that need opportunities to be employed and supported and grow a new workforce. And we're the new provider for North London Medical Education Programme with 57 trainees. And I'm delighted to say that uh, the medical director, director of workforce and I received the GMC survey, which is the trainee satisfaction survey only two days ago, uh, which I think placed us uh, as trainees as the second most satisfied in London. I think that's right, isn't it, Nick? And the fourth most satisfied in the NHS, which is a huge achievement, particularly given the difficult environment that many of our doctors have had to work as part of the challenges uh, that we all face in the National Health Service at the moment. Um, our commercial work is really important. I, um, I've always said, and I say to staff at the induction, I don't hide away from the fact I don't not talk about private practice, I don't not talk about commercial work. We have, uh, as I keep saying, no shareholders associated with what we do. We do not pay people bonuses. Every single penny we make from our commercial businesses go in, goes back into the reason we exist, which is to be a frontline, fabulous NHS hospital, providing care to NHS patients. But I would pay credit to our Moorfields private team, having uh, refurbished all of their inpatient and outpatient facilities and very nearly finished the inpatient side, continued to deliver a first-class experience for our patients and for our team in the United Arab Emirates, both uh, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, who have seen their busiest year on record this year, led by a brand new leadership team who are doing a tremendous job in promoting the Moorfields name in the Middle East um, and continue to, to build our name and our services from strength to strength. Money uh, does matter. We are at the times I keep mentioning of economic uncertainty and challenge. So we have to make sure that every pound we spend is spent wisely and carefully. Uh, NHS income increased to 175, nearly 176 million pounds. Our income from our private and overseas activities increased to nearly 29 million pounds. And to put that in perspective, we made an incredibly small surplus last year. So if you were to remove our commercial gain, of that, our ability to offer first-class NHS care would be challenged. So we continue to focus on all of these areas. And our total income now sits at around 235 million. So just reaching a conclusion, I want to just touch a bit on <clears throat> what I and my team are going to be focused on next year, because it's another busy year. We constantly ask the question, can we just have a nice, quiet, mellow year with nothing special going on and maybe put the feet up a bit? And it never, ever happens. And I've got to warn everyone, next year it's not going to happen again. Why is it not going to happen? Well, if we're supported with our public consultation, we would like to progress oil and we would like to submit an outline business case to the government and the Department of Health uh, about this Christmas time. That's a significant challenge for our team and a significant process for us to engage with you and with many other colleagues to make sure we are, in outline terms, we have a business case that means we can and should move. We're very focused, uh, and Sir Peng has been leading a lot of this work, on developing a research informatics program. We have one of the richest banks of data in the entire world, but particularly for ophthalmology. We need to use that to drive our research programs forward and to learn more about disease. We want to continue to drive our education program, both here in the UK and overseas. And we have a very clear strategy that Nora has developed to do so. And finally, as Dylan will touch on in a bit, talk about how we move the whole organisation, not just City Road, from a rating of good to outstanding, which is quite a challenge with the way that the CQC use their methodology and being based on 30 sites. But that's the process that we want to get to. So I just want to take this opportunity again to thank our staff, to thank you for your commitment. 
uh, for coming today uh, and engaging uh, with us. Um, without your support, uh, without your encouragement, and without you holding us to account, I don't think we would be the type of hospital that we're all very proud to be part of. So thank you very much indeed for listening.